Good morning YouTube viewers and subscribers. This video is going to cover some of the basic troubleshooting steps for a four-stroke engine. Now this video is, is really oriented more towards the beginner, uh, folks that don't have as much experience uh, either buying or refurbishing used engines. I've had num numerous people contact me asking me some of these questions so I figured I'd put a video together real quick to try to help you out. Uh, so what I've got here is my Sato FA50. It's an open rocker engine, but uh, no, Sato did not make an FA50 open rocker engine. This was an, an engine I purchased used off of RC Universe several years ago that was a basket case. Um, it had needed a complete rebuild and had a lot of damaged things, but I just made it an open rocker engine just because it was never going to be a pretty engine anyway and uh, for the purposes of this video this will do very well so let's assume you went ahead and you bought a used four-stroke engine and now you got it and you're like okay what did I get myself into so here are some of the things that could happen when you purchase a four-stroke engine and you're not really sure of its operating condition normally I don't ever just go and grab a four-stroke engine that I bought and go and just try and put it on a stand and run it I always do an initial inspection but the first thing you want to do is, does it rotate? Can you, crank, can you rotate the crankshaft over? If it doesn't even turn over, even with the glow plug removed, then chances are it's just gummed up. Uh, I would not suspect major internal damage, but I would say that it's gummed up. And in those instances, uh, the very first thing I would do to try and at least get it to turn over, because that's really what you want to do, you want to be able to get the, it to turn over first. I would take off the exhaust port or header, put some oil in there, drop some oil in the glow plug hole, maybe inject some oil in the breather hole, drizzle oil around the front of the prop drive washer, try and get it to seep in there, kind of let this stuff sit for a little bit and then take it out or use a heat gun and really heat the engine up really the entire engine not just localized anywhere I would use my industrial strength heat gun heat the engine up a lot and then begin to slowly see if that has uh, unfrozen or unstuck the crankshaft and if it has then that's a good thing it's typically that probably means it's just fuel residue that's gummed it up and you've heated it up enough so that it'll liquefy enough so that you can start moving it once you do that I would just keep doing it put some oil or oil in there heat it up and just keep going until you can see how free you can get it maybe maybe you won't have to disassemble the engine uh, and if you decide not to disassemble the engine then you're really going to want to oil it up and flush it out really good so the next thing is say you've oiled it up you've turned it you can you really can't get it to turn or you can get it to turn but it doesn't seem like it has compression so the first thing you're going to do when you determine if it, why it doesn't have compression is you would just look at the rocker arms and you see uh, if they're moving up and down, each one independently opening and closing. Now if you have absolutely no rocker arm movement, uh, then you probably need to start tearing into the engine um, because it could indicate one of many things. If there's no rocker arm movement at all, it could mean that your cam followers, also known as tappets sometimes, they always reside at the bottom of the push rods, whether they're in the front of the engine or in the back. Maybe they're stuck and they're not allowing rocker arm movement. Uh, this is something that could obviously uh, result in a lack of compression there. But if you see, say you see one rocker arm moving and the other one isn't, it always stays either up or down then you definitely have a cam follower that's stuck. Okay, so now let's say you have movement of both of them. You have a glow plug in, but you have no compression. What do you do then? Well, movement of the crankshaft with rocker arm movement on both of them and no compression with the glow plug in attached could mean that you have a damaged or broken piston ring. The ring could be fully compressed in the piston or you could have a damaged valve seat which is allowing air to bypass through there or possibly you've got a stuck valve. 
I mean, just because you've got rocker arm movement doesn't mean you don't have a valve that's stuck down. So as you're looking at that, you would check to see if your, you know, if your valves are actually moving at all. Now, if you think you don't have, if you think you might have a stuck valve, my recommendation would be to remove the glow plug, assuming you can turn the crankshaft. Make sure your crankshaft is at bottom dead center, your piston's at the furthest point down, and then you can just gently push on. I'll just pull this push rod out. You can just gently push on the valve and see if you can get movement. Now many times I'll get an engine like this and a valve will be stuck and you do that and you can kind of feel it break free. Now it could have also been broken free in your first step where you heated it up and oiled these things. But if you got a valve that's stuck, not moving, at least make sure your valve moves first. So these are some of the most basic things that you can check for for when you buy a used four-stroke engine. It's not turning over or it has a lack of compression. Obviously you also want to check your throttle, make sure it moves freely. And the same thing applies to that. If this is stuck or frozen, drop some oil in there and heat this thing up. 99% of the time, that's going to free this thing up. Now if you do end up having to completely disassemble the engine, Here's a word, a warning, or a general recommendation. Once you get the engine in hand, always inspect your fasteners. Make sure that the heads don't look damaged, rounded out, or cut slots cut in them. Hopefully you did your research and determined that before you bought the engine. But if you didn't, always clean these out because a lot of times these heads will gather a lot of garbage. Dirt, gunk, whatever. And I usually get a T-pin and some oil and just start cleaning it out and then going over it with a toothbrush because the worst thing that can happen when you're trying to disassemble an engine is to strip one of these heads out. Uh, it can be disastrous to the life of the engine because if it's on a head screw and you can't get the thing out then you're really resulting to drilling it out or cutting a slot in it to try and get it out with a slotted screwdriver. These things are not fun to try to do and uh, potentially disastrous. So clean your fasteners out, but before you ever attempt to remove any fastener of a used engine, especially if you had to do any of the steps I've mentioned before about getting it to turn over, drop some three-in-one oil or some kind of penetrating oil on all the fasteners and heat them up extremely well before you attempt to loosen them. That will give you the best chance of actually getting them loose and getting them out in one piece without having to do any drilling. So make sure the heads are clean, and then when you get a wrench in there, make sure you've got the proper size wrench and you've got full engagement, and only then begin to loosen it. And if you ever think that it's not going to break loose, and you feel like the head could be stripping, stop, oil, heat it up again, and then attempt to loosen it. So these are some of the things, some of the steps that a new person of buying used four-stroke engines or is very new to four-stroke engines can use to help them avoid losing their investment or maybe damaging parts that weren't damaged to begin with. So I hope these things were helpful to you and thank you for watching.